In this video, I'm going to show you how I use the Pose Morph tag in Cinema 4D to create morph targets in Unreal in order to create pillows. Amazing pillows. Because everybody loves pillows. Starting out here in Unreal Engine, I'm going to show you the scene that I put together before we get into how to do the morph targets. So just as a quick overview, I've set up this quick scene. There are a bunch of pillows on here doing their little swirly thing, dancing up, and you can kind of see some of the animations in here, kind of jump and say hooray, and then these things slowly inflate like a bunch of balloons. And just show how the shots are broken down. I just kind of cut these out and assembled this all into one scene, just like you saw in the video. So in here, I've got all of these pillows set up and I'll go through in just a minute and show you how we got from there to here, but I thought I'd just give you a quick breakdown of what's happening in this scene. So we've got the pillows, we've got the cameras, and then I've set up what's in this scene. I'm gonna back out so you can see it a bit more. But simple landscape, put pillows in a rock garden because why not? Um, Post-process volume set in here. I have turned the bloom off. I've made sure my exposure is set to one, so that's not going to change on me. Image effects, make sure the vignette is turned off. And then depth of field and everything else is handled by the camera. For the environment, I'm just using the HDRI backdrop and that's giving me the bulk of the lighting. And then I'm trying to blend some of the scene that I've got this ground plane in here. So simple rock ground material applied to it. And then I'm using this height fog to try to just blend it into the background a little bit off into the distance. And that is about it for the most part. So I'm just giving you a quick overview of what's happening here. Now we can jump into Cinema 4D and start making these morphs. All right, so we're in Cinema 4D. I'm gonna walk you through this process um, to just do a few versions of how I made this other one. So I'm gonna start with this pillow morph. This is gonna be my base mesh that I'm going to work with. Um, and I'm gonna make a duplicate because I don't wanna work off of this main one. And the main thing to keep in mind is all of these vertices and faces that you have here when we make a morph, whether we're you know blowing this thing up or you know doing whatever, you kind of need to have a direct line for this to work well from each vertice to hit the next one. So this is going to be my base. I'm just going to turn it off. We're going to label this first one base. So we're going to modify this one to do what we want it to do. This first version, we're just going to make a few modifiers and we'll make some duplicates off of it just when we need to change it up. So to start off, I'm going to use a twist modifier. I'm just going to use this so that I can kind of just bend this a bit to make kind of like a state to state pose. So we've got zero, we'll take this up to 71, right around there, that's pretty good. Um, and I'm just gonna do a few of these things. So I have state one and state two. And if I wanted this to twist the other way, we could do minus 71. And that would allow us to, when we get into the morph targets, to animate one to the other and kind of make it look side to side if that's something that you want to do. I'm going to do another one on here. The next one I'm going to do is Spherify. This one, as it is, was pretty good. I'll tone it down just a hair, but this is what I use to make this thing just inflate up like a pillow and bulge. So we've got these three. And then the last one I'm going to do is, instead of using a modifier, I'm just going to modify these by hand to get the effect that I want. So to do this, I'm going to just make a duplicate because I'm gonna kind of bend this thing beyond what it should go. So we're gonna call this pillow flat. Better. And I could just scale this whole thing in, but what I want to do is to not bend in or not squash this seam. So what I did for this project was selected a series of faces Grab a few in the center, and then I'm gonna turn on soft selection. Kind of get this down to a point where I 
and just kind of slowly bend it in. I'm gonna start like that just a bit to get it even. And now I'm gonna hit UW and just select all uh, that are connected. I'm gonna turn off soft selection because now I don't want that. And I'm just gonna scale this guy in a bit. So now this gives me a flat pillow to start with that I can inflate to the next phase. And you can kind of bend these, morph it, you can do the outside, anything that you want. Um, just keep continuing to make states off of this. So, all right, good enough. How are we gonna use this? So we've got our pillow flat. This one is kind of committed to the geometry. Now we need to do the same for all of these. So one by one, I'm gonna turn this guy on and I'm just gonna go up to here connect objects. Now this isn't going to delete the original and alternately you can right click and do it but I'm going to connect this first one. We're going to call it bloat because it's bloated. Twist. And twist one's good. So we're going to do the same thing here. Connect this. Twist one. And the last one. twist too. So I'm going to hide this. And now if we go through each one, you can see that all of these committed shapes are right where we want them to be. So let's make use of this. We're going to go back to our pillow morph, which is our base model that we want to work off of. We're going to go to tag, rigging, and pose morph. And there's a number of things you could do, but really for this one, we just need to check points because that's the only thing we're really working with on this. So we're gonna call this pillow underscore morph. That's gonna be our, and we'll call it base. That's our base pose. And I'm gonna name all of these because that's gonna export out when we go. So pillow flat. We're gonna do this for each one. So select what we want. We're gonna twirl down advanced here. And we're just gonna set the target for what we want it to be. So flat goes to flat. And to demonstrate this, if you go to animate now, this is how our morph targets are gonna work when we translate it over. But now we can kind of go back and forth between state to state. So we're gonna quickly go through and add another pose. And we're just gonna quickly build this out. Pillow, bloat. If we go to animate, we can check all of these one by one and just see if they're working. So flat looks good, bloat looks good, our twist looks good, we can kind of go side to side. And with these, you can stack these up and get a mixture of parameters. So, you know, you want this big thing to breathe or whatever, you can control these. And I'll show you how this is all going to translate over. So the last step, we've got all of our states set up, we've got this material, our materials on our pillow and we're good to go. We're going to select our pillow. We're going to export out our FBX. And you can go to File and Export and hit the gear if you yank it this way. I'm using 7.3, which is 2013, seems to be the most compatible. And we should be good to go. So I'm going to export this out. We're going to call this Pillow Morphs Demo. And we're good to go. So now we can hop into Unreal. So I've made us a, a demo scene, which I'm going to load this up just so it's less cluttered and I can show you how we get from start to finish. Okay, so the first thing we want to do is import our FBX file, putting it into its own folder. So the first thing we need to do when we import this is check skeletal mesh. We want to make sure that there are no bones in this, but we do need to have a skeletal mesh to have the control. And then out down under advanced, you want to go down and make sure import morph targets is checked. If you don't have this checked, you don't have morph targets. And the other important thing on this is you need to import an animation. 
We didn't actually keyframe anything, we didn't actually make one, but you do need to have one as a sequencer for this to actually animate, and I'll show you why. So let's import this in. Exit this out. So now you can see our two materials imported. We have a physics asset, which we won't need, the base skeleton, which we won't really be using, our animation, which is empty, and our skeleton mesh, which is important. So when I open this guy up, you'll see that, okay, we're in this window. And now you can see our morph targets translated in. And just like the other one, these stack on top of each other. So if I zero these out, you can kind of see that we can animate these. One thing to note is with the pose morph tag in cinema, we can make it to one, but you can't really go past it you can actually force values beyond it, but you won't get the most reliable results, which is why I tended to do twist one and twist two. Ideally, you could go in the negative direction and it would look the other way, but you can start to see that it just kind of sends the points off into the other direction. That could be something that you want. It's there as an option, but it's a little harder to control. So let's exit this out. We're going to save everything. And now there's one more thing we need to do to get this up and running. So our skeleton mesh, we're going to right click on this, go to create, and we want to make an animation blueprint. And this is going to allow us to control and animate these pose morph or these morph targets inside of Unreal. So let's make this. Let's open it up. And now what we need to do is create our controls that we're going to animate into Sequencer. And this is the last step before we can get into keyframing and doing what we want with it. So we're gonna start with the event graph. We don't need this get pawn owner. And now what we need to do is, I'm gonna compile this guy. We're gonna do get morph, set morph target. That's what we want. So this is saying it's targeting itself, which is living inside of this pillow blueprint that we have. So we don't need to plug anything into that. But the morph target name, we need to type this in manually. So I'm gonna open our skeletal mesh back up and the names that we put into our poses in Cinema 4D, that's how these are going to come up here. So pillow underscore flat bloat, twist one, twist two. That's what we're gonna enter in. So pillow underscore flat and I'm gonna make a tag for each one of these each pose that we have so bloat oops, twist one oops twist three is not gonna work Okay, so now we've called out each pose that we want to control. So we're gonna string these up so that all of the events are actually firing each other. And the last thing we need to do is just create variables that we can control in Sequencer um, to work with. So I'm gonna pull this out. We're going to promote to variable, and this is gonna make this float value that we will just call pillow flat. That's the parameter we want. We're gonna make this public so we can access this outside of this window. It'll pop up in our little menus. And the last thing we need to make sure to do is expose the cinematics. This is gonna make sure that we can actually access this in Sequencer, which is very important. And we're gonna do this for each one. So, pillow, bloat, And you can also just duplicate them down here. Save a few steps. Twist one. Twist two. So get and get. So now everything's already checked for us. Load these guys up. Compile and this should all be working. So we're gonna save this and we'll minimize it. So now we're ready to take this animation blueprint that we just made, drag it into the scene. I'm gonna just scale this up. We'll just double it. 
because that seems like a good size and we'll yeah rotate it so quickly I'm just gonna add a material to this mm. we'll pick a fun one sure and the last thing we want to do is pull this guy into sequencer so when we pull this in what we need to do is actually expose those controls that we just made. So first thing we need to do is the skeletal mesh component. We gotta expose this. And then under this track, we need to go up to animation instance. And this is what we just created. Expose that. Now, when we do the tracks, we have our float values that we did so we can control these poses. So we'll just expose all of these because we're gonna animate them. So now when I go to scrub these values, nothing happens. Why is that? This animation down here is empty. So when we need to import the animation, when we import this FBX, this is why. So I select it. There's only one that it came with. We're going to do this and then stretch this out just past the timeline. Because if we go past this where it's empty, it'll no longer register that we're using this animation. But now we have our controls so we can go way past or do all the values that we want but if I set this there's our first target and we have our pose morphs so now we can go in and keyframe these to whatever we want help if I move the timeline Let's see, we'll just set this down to one. So if I wanted this to inflate, which is what I did with the video, I can go in and just control all of these. And we'll say, we'll just make this bloat up really quick. And you can go through and finish keyframing from here. So this is the repeatable step to show you how these all played out down in sequencer for this file. I animated these around the center, but you can see they started in that flat state. They expanded around, and then I had these basically deflate or you know, get rid of that flat state. They bounced up, and then you can see I added some squash and stretch in here for the other file. Um, hide this. Some of these that didn't actually make the video, but I did a bend and a bend deformer in cinema and kind of arced it so they can kind of jump up and say, you know, yay! And, basically mixed a number of these together and animated them to get the effect that I wanted and eventually just blew them up and sent them on their way. And if you followed along, you made pillows. Good for you. Hope you found this video helpful. If you did, you know what to do. 